This is Jonathan Aguilf here for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined by former world champion Regis Progray. Regis, how are you getting on? We've been talking a bit off camera. Snowstorm season in uh, Texas. Yeah, man. Yeah, just told you snow. We got all kinds of bullshit over here. Besides Corona, we got snow. I don't know if you can see in the background my fucking ceiling. Um, yeah, we got holes in the ceiling because we flooded. My kitchen was flooded. The pipes bust. A lot of bullshit going on. So I'm I'm actually about to leave in a few days. I'm I'm going back to the West Coast for a little while. Don't blame you. Back to Cali. Back to Cali. Yeah, back to Cali. Mm-hmm. Regis, uh, we last spoke maybe a week or two before your win over Juan Heraldes. Um, mm-hmm. An assessment of your performance. Happy with how it went third round knockout? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, for me, it was um, pr- prior to that fight, you know, it was a year. You know, that was a year since I've been out the ring. And, you know, I was I was kind of thinking about maybe I'll have ring rust. And, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect, you know. So I just went out there. And, but I felt so good, you know. Even in the dressing room, I just felt so good. I was so confident. And I don't I don't know what it is, man. Like, I think after you take a loss, like I took a loss against Josh Hill, I still thought I won the fight. But officially, it was a loss. And after you take a loss, you just – I don't know what it is. I'm, I need to ask other fighters if they feel the same way. But my confidence is higher. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how. I don't even know how that works. You know, because I guess that you know, you you think it's gonna be something real bad, and it's it's not. You know, so after I took that, my confidence got just so so much higher. So I was in the dressing room, you know, for the Juan Herrera. That's why I was in there, and I was just loose, and I just felt good about myself, and it was just like you know, and I I trained so hard for that fight. You know, that was one of my. I think I trained. You know. I just, I just, my training camp was just very, very intense and I lived like a fighter, you know, because of course, previous to that, you know, with the Josh Taylor fight, I was living out on the West Coast. I was living in LA, you know, which was a mistake for me. Um, But then I came back here, I'm back in Texas around my team and, you know, I live in training camp basically and I live like a fighter, you know, so um, like I said, going back to the fight, I was in my dressing room. I just, at first I was a little tense. My, my coach was like, you know, like just loosen up, just chill out, just loosen up. Cause I was throwing everything with all power, all really hard. And then I just got loose and in the fight, I just felt good. I felt good. I felt loose and my body was just, I was very relaxed. I was very loose and relaxed. And, um, and I, I don't think he hit me. We fought, it was a three rounds, you know, and he didn't touch me in the whole three rounds. You know, I felt, I mean, I felt good. How did you find the atmosphere in there? It was the first time that crowds were back in stadiums, limited yeah. crowd, of course. Well, listen, I never fought without the crowd yet. Yeah. You know, so it was it was normal to me. You know, it, it felt a little weird because, you know, we was in the Alamo Dome, and the Alamo Dome holds about 80,000 people. So you have people, they, they how they space people out was kind of weird. The bubble is kind of, you know, I don't, I don't like the bubble thing, of course, but, you know, it is what it is. We just got to do it. So... Um, you had people all on the floor, but they were spaced out on the floor. But then you had people way in the top, and the Alamo Dome is huge. So, you know, you got people way, way in the top, and it was just like – it was kind of weird, you know. So you had a lot of people there, but they were just all spaced. I think I think it was about 10, 11,000 people, if I'm not mistaken. But it was a – it was – everybody was so, so spaced out. So it was it was, it was, it was kind of weird, but, you know, I still – I still fought with the crowd, you know. I, I never fought without the crowd yet. So I think that's a good thing. And then you went home and uh, I think your wife had another baby, right? Had the baby, yeah, man. And look, the baby due date was, I think, that Friday. I fought Saturday on Halloween. The baby due date was Friday. And the baby, I came home, I rushed home, and the baby came that Sunday. You know, that it was it was like it was like a storybook ending. I think one day I will have a movie and, you know, maybe we can end a movie right there. I'll start the movie right there, whatever. Yeah, you'll never forget that part then. But yeah, never forget that fight, man. Never forget that fight. Halloween, you know, the baby came the next day. It was, you know, all perfect timing. Was it also, from your perspective, were you glad to just get that W after, you know, you were disappointed with the Josh Taylor fight, but now mm-hmm. you've sort of, you've not saying that you were, you know, it was lingering on your mind, but you've now got that win and you're going Yeah, forward. basically, because they say, they say you, you know, in, uh, by, uh, saying in boxing is, you know, you, you always, um, you just as good as your last fight, you know. So that's kind of, you know. So even you know, I had a whole. I had to basically go through a whole year with that last, you know, with the with the whole Josh Taylor thing. And so this was like I got it off my mind, and you know, I think I think the Josh Taylor fight will come back around eventually one day. Hopefully, I mean, we'll make a shitload of money at one forty seven. I think between me and him, and I I think I saw an interview. He said he 
he'll like to fight me like, you know, four or five times like the old days. And I mean, hey, me and Josh Taylor, we could be, um, you know, we maybe we could do that. If we have another good fight, another good fight after that, if people pay millions to watch us fight, you know, it could be me and him fighting for the rest of our lives together. We'll then we'll fight the old folks home together one day, you know. So um, you know, that that might I think that might come back around. But yeah, that was I just had to, you know, I, I got it off and, you know, I just I just want to get back to the top again. I still feel like I'm the best at 140 and I still want to get back to the top and I still want to keep proving that, you know, I'm I'm the top. I'm the top at 140. Well, right now, uh, we know Josh Taylor and Ramirez are going to fight hopefully in May. Now, right. let's talk about uh, last night, Adrian Broner returning after 24 months, mm-hmm. beat Giovanni Santiago. Um, your assessment of AB's performance, Regis? I don't know if you saw my Twitter yet, bro. Was that before the fight that you tweeted that? I tweeted that after the first round. After the first round, I think AB is shot. I think as he's going down, he's declining. You know, he he said he blames it on ring rust. Adrian Broner doesn't have, you know, he's 31 and I'm older than him, but I'm younger than him in boxing. You know, same thing like me. I was talking, you know, I'm good friends with, with the Charlo twins. You know, we was talking the other day, and you know, I started. They, they're the same age. They, I think, they're 31. I'm 32, but I'm young, as far as boxing wise, I'm younger than them because I had less fights and I started late. I started boxing when I was 17, and they started when I think Adrian Brown, if I'm not mistaken, he started when he was like six, seven, eight years old. I know the twins. They started when they was like eight years old. You know, so they've been. They had like a, a almost like a 10 year start on me. They was they was they started boxing 10 years before me and I wasn't doing all that stuff. So um as far as Adrian Broner goes, he's he's older. He's way older than me in boxing and he had a lot of hard fights already. You know, he fought he did fight a lot of good fighters. He fought a lot of big names. He had a lot of hard fights already. Um I just think he's done. I think he's shot. I don't think he's I don't think he'll ever be the fighter he was. You know, he was good at he was very, very good at 130, 135. Once he started coming up to 140, 147, you know, the, the opposition, of course, it started getting harder for him. You know, I, I, he did win a belt at 140, but he didn't win a belt at 140, like, uh, against the killers they have right now. And I think as far as him getting a belt, um, unless he uh, he can't beat the champions right now. You know, I, he definitely can't beat a Josh Taylor or Ramirez. I mean, he might have... He might have more luck with somebody like Ramirez, you know, but I still don't think he'll beat Ramirez, you know, because of his activity. Definitely can't beat Josh Taylor. Definitely can't beat me. Um, um, and that's the that's the really the three top dogs at one forty right now. So I don't think he'll I don't think he'll beat any one of us. So, but yeah, I, I just think as far as overall, man, I think I don't I think he shot. I don't think he has it anymore, you know. And and once he does, it'll it'll be very very apparent once he fights somebody like a high level fighter like myself or like a, a Taylor or like a Ramirez. Once he does fight somebody like that, then I think that, you know, it'll I think it'll be over for him. That dude last listen, I don't know if you did you ever box before? No. Never boxed. You might have could have beat that dude last night he fought. I don't no, know if you said that fuck. You know you no. somebody, listen, that dude he fought last night was terrible. You know you you can't call nobody a bum because he fought, you know, he was a fighter and he fought, he was an undefeated fighter or whatever, but the level he was on, I mean, he was a very, very low level fighter that Adrian Brown fought. I honestly think I would have stopped that dude in less than five minutes. You know, maybe he would have got out the first round with me, but the second round for sure, I would have knocked that dude out. Like for sure, I would have knocked that dude out. He fought last night and he went the distance. And to be honest, it was a very, very close fight. You know, everybody to be honest, it was a very close fight. I would just say he would have won, but it was it was close. You know, it was a very close fight. And Adrian Broner had that fight with him. So, listen, man, I, I just don't I, – I think A.B. I – think, I think he shot. How did you score the fight? Did you score it? I didn't score the fight. I just know it's close. I don't score fights and stuff. I just watched it as a fan, you know, as a fan. Just, I just wanted to see what Adrian Broner was going to do. Um, yeah, I didn't score, but I know it was, it was close. You, you know, the dude was going back and forth. It was a very close fight. The dude was going back and forth. Adrian Brown don't look like he he might have stuck. He might have stung him one time when he hit him with that check hook, and the dude, he you know, he almost dropped. Um, but besides that, that was it. But did you have him winning, Adrian Brown? I I think he won. Yeah, I, I'll give him the victory. But it was it was a close. It was a very close fight, man. Like you got to think. I wasn't, you know, the thing is, when we watch boxing, usually, if it's not two high-level fighters, usually we watching the person 
you know, who we, who we came to watch, right? So I was watching Adrian Broner. I wasn't watching Santiago, you know? So um, I was seeing Santiago hit Adrian Broner. But, you know, when you watch it boxing, you, usually you're watching one person. You, you're watching the person who you – basically who you paid to see. For me, it was Adrian Broner. So, of course, I was watching him. But I wasn't really watching Santiago or nothing like that. But I, I just know that it was a – for me, I just know it was a very, very close fight. So – you don't buy anything about ring ring rust because he did have almost two two years out. You know, lost a lot of weight, so you, you don't accept that at all. You you can say that you definitely can say that, but that level fighter that that level fighter is he, that level fighter was shit. You know, you look at all right, look at how how long did Tyson Fury take off? Like a year, right? Or two uh, years? How long? Two three years, yeah. Yeah. He didn't have that same ring rust. I mean, Tyson Fury and Adrian Ron is two different people, of course, but I just – I don't think I, – I can't say it's the ring rust thing. I mean, I think he did have a little ring rust, of course, but the caliber fighter he fought was just – you know, it was a very low-level fighter, and you're supposed to stop somebody like that, you know. So, I just think and, – and you just look at – I don't think his reflex – you know, Adrian Broner excelled because his reflexes was – he had cat-like reflexes. And he was he's athletic, you know, so um and he's tough. Those reflexes are going down. Now, of course, they're not all the way down yet. They're not all the way down. You know, he's still 31. He still has something, but his reflexes are going down and his athleticism is going down also. They start they're starting to decline. So um and that was that was his that was his whole boxing. That was his whole boxing game. His at his reflexes and his athletic ability. And both of those are declining right now. Um and so yeah, I just that's just my take on it. Um, he said in the post-fight press conference, and a fight is anticipation for a fight between you and Brona. It seems to be building. He was asked whether he'd fight you next, and he said, "I'ma f you up." I saw that. Yeah, What's I saw. That? I mean, that's that's what me. And, that's what me and him say, man. We say, "I will fuck you up," and I say, "I'm gonna fuck him up too." You know, I. That's what we're supposed to say, you know. At the end of the day, he's supposed to say that he not he not gonna say, oh, he gonna beat me and all that. You know, it's it's AJ Brown. AJ Brown's a clown. He's gonna say what he's gonna say. I think deep down he knows. Don't come fucking with me. I'm the wrong motherfucker to come fuck. I think deep down he knows. Like I'm too dangerous. I'm way too dangerous. I'm I'm faster than him. I have I'm I feel like I'm tougher than him. Um, I'm definitely stronger than him. My chin is hard. You know how can how can you beat me? You know, like how, what can you do? To beat me, you know, especially if I'm on, you know, if I'm on my game that night, you know. So, I, I mean, you're supposed to say that he's supposed to say he gonna fuck me up and all that type of stuff. But I think, you know, especially last night, the world knows. You know, the world knows. Don't come knocking on this door. Do you see that realistically happening next? Next? No, I don't think it'll happen next. Um, I think it could happen. It all depends on who they give me next, and then after whoever I fight next, and then you know maybe maybe the fight after that, and maybe it definitely probably could happen in twenty twenty one. You know I don't think it'll happen next year. I think it, I think it's a realistic fight now to make it happen in the next probably in the next two fights, two or three fights. So I think for me, I'm thinking twenty twenty one. That's what I'm thinking. You know, because of course whoever they give me to fight next, you know I'm gonna fuck them up. And then, um, you know, I'm going to go call I'm going to go call AJ Brown. You know, they ask me, people ask me the same thing. What you said about Brown, I'm going to say, fucking, let's make this shit happen next. Let's do it right now. You know, let's make it next. So, um, and I think that for me and him, for him to fight me, I think he, he demands a lot of money, right? So my name is, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And once my name gets up there, like, and everybody's demanding the fight, then that's when it's – I think that's when it's really going to take place. Because, of course, I don't think Adrian Broner is scared of me. I don't think so. But he wants to get paid, you know, because Adrian Broner fought – he fought Mikey Garcia. He fought Pac – I mean, fucking he fought Pacquiao, you know, Medina. He fought a lot of – you know, he fought – you know, he fought some, you know, huge names and stuff. So, I don't think he's scared of me. But it has to make sense money-wise for him to get in the ring with me because I'm I'm going to hurt him. I, I'm going to hurt Adrian Broner. Like, if I ever fight him, I guarantee I hurt him. And I think that if I hurt him – bad enough it, like the way I train and the way I fucking hit and how hard I hit if I hurt him bad enough I'm gonna damage him and it might be one of his last fights basically so and he knows that I think his team knows that they know I'm fucking I damage people that's just what I do I hurt people when I fight people I don't try to I'm not trying to win a decision you know I'm trying to hurt you like that's just that's kind of the way I came up that's 
you know, that's the way I train. When I when I fight, I want to hurt somebody. That's what I do. That's why I box. That's why I'm not in jail right now because I fucking I fight in the ring, not on the street because I I do like to hurt people. So, um, so yeah, I think that you know, saying all that is just saying that he 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 will take the fight, but when it's when it's when it's a lot of reward that goes with it. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you'd want a crowd as well. Let's be honest. Of course, of course, of course. And I think, I mean, fuck, for me and him, that'll, that'll fucking draw a huge crowd, you know? I think definitely, you know, I mean, out here, we, we can have crowds. We can have crowds in Texas. I think Atlanta, I think Florida, we can have crowds and stuff like that. So, um, you know, once that we can, we can pick a place that we can have a fucking nice-sized crowd between me and him, it'll do, it'll do big numbers. So the weight class, because obviously that was a talking point throughout the week that, you know, he wasn't able to make 140. The fight got moved to 147. Obviously, you know, during this time, you're in quarantine, you're in lockdown. He said it's harder to train, which, and you know, some fighters have had trouble making weight, you know, being in hotels and things. Do you see that fight happening maybe at catch weight at 140? Probably catch weight. Yeah, probably catch weight. It, I mean, it won't, it really wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't matter to make it or make sense to make it at 140 if it's not for a belt anyway, you know, so maybe you make it at a catch weight, not at 147, not at 140, 143, 144, 142, something like that, because unless we fight for a belt, it don't make sense to make it at 140. Now, of course, you know, Ramirez and Taylor, they fighting, you know, for all the belts on, I think, like you said, May 8th, so after that, maybe, you know, some of the belts might be free and then me and Adrian brought it to fight for a belt at 140, then, you know, then we'll both have to make 140, you know, but you know, he, he didn't have to make it. And, you know, for me, same thing, you know, I, 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 I do agree with him because it is, it's hard in the, in the, in a bubble. It's hard to train that shit, man. It's real hard to train that, you know, my last fight, I was off by a pound, like a pound and a half or something like that, 1.6 or something. So, you know, it, it, it really is. It's hard to train that, you know, it, usually with the normal stuff, you can go outside, you can do things. But I mean, one, the last fight with me, it was like one of the days we had to like sit in the, in a fucking room, like the whole one of the day, it was the whole day you couldn't leave the room. And it's like, damn, like this is when, this is like a crunch time when I'm losing weight, this is what I have to do. And we had to sit in the room, we couldn't leave. So of course we would, you know, we did some stuff in the room, but of course that's not like being fucking gym, you know, big, big difference. So I do agree with him, the bubble shit, it is, that's, I mean, that's kind of the crazy times we live in right now. It, it, it is what it is and we just got to do it. But it is, it's definitely harder to make weight in the bubble, for sure. So I do agree with him on that. All right, so it's not going to be Broner next, it doesn't look like. But for you next, I know there was, you know, talk of potentially you against Mario Barrios, WBA, regular title. Is that a possibility? What conversations have you had with people? I think, I don't think Mario Barrios is next because I think he's going up, he's going to vacate. From what I heard, he's going to vacate for, um, to go up to 147. He's... Yeah, he's going to go to 147. He's going to vacate that belt. So, I mean, for me, I don't know. I don't know yet. We're still waiting. Um, I'm still training. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to the West Coast. And in a few days, I'm going to go out there and train and do, get some work done and stuff like that, too. And just hopefully, you know, they can, um, you know, they can find something for me. But for me, I just – I stay in the gym. I stay in the gym year-round. And, you know, that's just – for me, that's just what I got to do. That's the reason I moved back to Texas, to be back around my trainers, to train – to live in training camp. And that's kind of what I've been doing. I've been just training year-round. So, um, whoever it is, I'll be, I'll be more than ready. I get the feeling you'll fight literally anyone in this division. We put out uh, an article yeah. on our website, and you, you replied you'd fight any of them. There was Arnold Barboza. There was Cepeda. Anyone is are those the type Any, of things you're looking at? Anybody, bro. Anybody, you know. And I, I fight anybody. You know, I know. I know a lot of people say that oh, I fight anybody. They say all that shit, but then they be like, they bring up a name, be like, oh, I don't think I want to fight that. Oh no, I don't. Me, I will fight anybody. You know, I will. I will literally. It, it doesn't matter to me. I will fight anybody. It's it's nobody out there. Um, I because for me, I still feel like I'm at the top of the throne. I was number one for a long time, and of course, you know now. They got the other champions, and I, I respect them. I give that to them, you know, being champions and stuff like that. But I still feel like I'm the best, you know. Um, I still I still feel like I want a Josh Taylor fight. I still, it was a close fight, but, you know, if he's the so-called best, and you see, you know, you see the result came from that. So, um, and I never got in the ring. I never been, been able to get in the ring with Jose Ramirez, but I, I think I'll definitely beat him. I don't think that'll be no trouble to me beating somebody like, you know, Jose Ramirez. Um, so, for me, yeah, like I said, anybody. I, I don't. It don't matter to me. I fight anybody. Anybody. 
So is your plan basically to either win a world title? You have said before you want to win a world title 140 before moving up. But if an Adrian Broner fight was offered at 140, that, that's another avenue. Yeah, if if the Adrian Broner fight, I mean, listen, I, I tell my manager all the time, man, what's the, he always asks me, what's the priority, man? The, it's the money and the belts, the money and the belts. I mean, if you, if you like, say if the, the belts is like a 9.8 priority, the money is a 10, basically. So that's how close they are, you know? It's like, that's how close they are, you know? But of course, you know, that's... It's just something that I want. I want to be a champion again at 140 before I move to 147. You know, and I, I do. I do get. You know, I, I am getting offers and stuff like that at 147 already. But I think, like for me, I just want to be a champion again at 140. But um, if I don't, if I don't, if I'm not able to get like uh like a, a shot at the belt, you know, this year, then of course, then I won't. St- I won't stick around 140 forever. Then I'm gonna go up to 147 and chase the belt um at 147. Then I'll be a then I'll be a two division world champion, you know. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just some something, something I just want to do. I want to have another belt at 140 before moving up. But if they offer me something huge at 147, be like, oh, I, something I cannot, I, I can't refuse. The money's too big. Then it's like, oh shit, all right, I guess it's time to go to 147. Regis, a uh, couple fights. I just want to get your opinion on quickly. Uh, the big heavyweight undisputed fight looks like it's edging closer. Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury, what's your thoughts on that fight? Man, that's that's gonna be huge, man. Um, I want to come to that. You know, I mean, that's gonna be a fucking huge fight. You know, um, I for me, I think Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world. I just think that. You know, I I thought that I was going. Uh, of course, as the American, I was going with Deontay Wilder both times. I was definitely rooting for him, but I still thought that you know, as far as Tyson Fury is a fucking huge motherfucker. He's huge. He's big, and he can move like a small man. You know, same thing like the Ali type of thing. You know, so, um, and he has a as we can see, he had a he has a fucking a great chin. So I think that you know, for me, I, I'm going with Tyson Fury, but you know, not by much. I think it's uh, it, uh fucking Andy Joshua. Uh, you know, he's a big motherfucker too. He he can fight his ass off too. But for me, I just. I lean more towards Tyson Fury. Well, uh, Regis, uh, appreciate you coming on today, giving us your time as usual. Um, do you want to just send a message, especially to your UK fans who want to see you back in the UK at some point? Um, man, I, I think I'll be back over there, man. I can't say soon, but I definitely will be back over there. Um, hope this guy give me a fight. You know, give me a fight over there. Give me the right fight over there. We was we was hoping for... Lewis Ritson. Yeah, was, Richardson, but he said no, he's not interested in that at all, you know. So, um, maybe one day, maybe I'll come back one day, if not just a visit for a little vacation. Because when I came over there, I couldn't, you know, I, I was over there for like a month, but I couldn't do nothing, you know. I was stuck in my room the whole time, just bored out of my fucking brain. So, um, you know, next time I come, I'll have some fun. So, I, I definitely be back, and I definitely, you know, I always love the UK fans. and since, you know, when I started boxing, I wanted to come over there and fight. You know, I always wanted to come to the UK and fight, and I still don't regret going over there. I still regret some things, but I still want to come over there and fight, you know. So that's kind of why I did it. You know, I love the fans over there. Well, uh, yeah, Regis, appreciate your time. Uh, enjoy yourself back in California. Hopefully it's better weather. And uh, yeah. when you've got a fight date, hopefully we'll catch up again. Okay, man, thanks. Cool.